If you want to save money on your trading card purchases, we have a promo link uh, over at 50cards.shop. Enter the promo code at night to get 5% off your order. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Nexus at Night, your weekly Vanguard podcast that we totally didn't just record five minutes ago. I'm Atlas. I'm Matt. I'm Root Beer. And today we are doing a set review for DBT 11 Clash of the Heroes. Um, so, to those who have never seen a set review uh, before from us, we go through <clears throat> the high rarity cards all the way down for the double R's and any other cards that interest us, and then uh, talk about them. So, mm -hmm. let's get to it. Uh, starting off, we have the Dragon Empire, um, which is. Me. Yes. Go for it. Okay. So first we have Will O' Wisp Daybreak Tamayura. So when it's placed by riding on top of the original, you can search your deck or drop zone for one order card without the Regalis piece and activate it and put it in your hand and then activate Persona Ride. Oh. Cool. Yeah. Hmm. That's and pretty then dope. On attack, you bind the original from your soul. Uh one card each. Uh Basically, one each of the doll names, and then from your soul, call them to your guard circle. They get 5k at the end of the turn. You ride the card bound as cost for rest, bound for cost as rest. Um, so, can you do the, the grade two and the grade one of like each doll, or does it have to be two and two and one and one? No, it's just like one of each name. Okay, oh, I see. So, you flip between the two Tommy ors repeatedly, yes. Uh, so, because the original one, the skill activates in ride phase, at the start of your ride phase, you get the power plus 5,000, then you persona ride onto this new one. So, your front row is still getting the plus 15k, like always. Gotcha. And then, uh, on attack, the dolls get another 5k when you call them out, so they are effectively 30k. That's pretty cool. Alright. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then, because you can just search, like, any order... There is the grade three order that was introduced in set eight that was Soul Blast two and then call two. I think it was call one of each doll from the drop zone. Mm, I think so. Yeah, it's not broken toys. It's something else. Yeah. Right? Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh. Great. Great. Uh. Tom Era support almost yeah. makes me want to build it, if not for the fact that uh, broken toys exist and is expensive. Yes. So. Please reprint <laughs> broken dolls. Uh, yeah, so the grade 3 order, Scarlet of Fluttering oh. Effervescent Life, is Soul Blast 2, if you have Vanguard with Tamayura. Uh, choose cu one card each with Rurimi and Rarami from Drop Zone, call them the Rear Guard Circle. So that's... Uh, because the deck is very over-centralized over the, around the dolls, and the entire deck is just putting your dolls into soul, that order is necessary for building a board. Ah. Makes sense. That is funny that a lot of these uh, things that search in order they go except for the Regalis piece. No, no free uh, one per, once per game thing for you. Yeah, yeah. I, I like how this is just going to be like an additional line of text on every card that searches in order. Yep. Okay. <laughs> now they have to do it forever. It's like in Yu Gi Oh where they have to put hard once per turns on everything. We're just going to yep. have this for except for Frog turn. the Jam. Except Frog the Jam. Thank you. Yeah. Although now it's called Slime Toad, which that. Come on, just let him keep Frog the Jam. He's already got such a bad uh, bad rap anyways. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. So, next up. Oh, we got an encounter ride line. Dragonic Kaiser Vermilion. So, I right, close back. Turn. Uh, you can't bless one. Choose two of your units with only Narukami for their clans, and they get 5k until end of turn. And until end of turn, when it would attack, you can choose two of your opponent's rear guard circles. This unit battles all of the the vanguard and all the units on the chosen circles. So, unlike Clarissa, Clarissa just chose any three units, so you could theoretically attack three rear guards if you wanted to for some reason. Mm -hmm. uh, this one has to attack the vanguard and then any two rear guards. And then at the end of the battle of attack, if you play a normal order, which you could be doing every turn anyways, yeah. and you're a opponent has four or less damage, you can discard a card and damage them. Oh, yeah, let me pull up that, uh, mm -hmm. that order, because this is important. Um, 
Yes. Said order is called Eternal Thunderbolt, um, mm -hmm. which is a rare, but uh, this is important, I think. Yeah, so it can be played from the drop zone, which is cool and interesting, and you can oh. only play it for if you have only Narukami and Vermilion in its card name. Uh, so you choose one of your vanguards to get... Uh, when your opponent's rear guard that was hit by this unit will be retired from the rear guard circle, bind it instead of retiring it. Oh. And if your opponent has no rear guards, all of your front row rear guards get 5k until end of turn, and if it was played from drop zone, bind it. So you get two uses out of it each yep. time if you play it from hand. Um, this is very cool. Um, I, I also like how they premium proofed it by doing all right, an Arakami and Vermilion. Yeah. <laughs> it's also not having a cost. Uh, yeah. yeah. It doesn't have a cost, right? Yeah. Nope. Yep, just no cost. Plays it, it plays also it. free. Yeah. That's very good. And yeah. this, is, this is one of the cards I would expect them to just put a cost on for reasons. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think the reason there isn't one is because it doesn't directly do something outright it just gives your vanguard those abilities that you then have to act upon now at the same time those are those things that you have to act upon are very easy to accomplish so mm -hmm. yeah you know your mileage may vary i i think this is really good um it's better than the the blue care one that's for sure yeah no this order is neat uh the fact that it's free that you can play it from the drop zone uh, basically ensures that it'll always be in rotation. You can also play fewer copies of it because of that. That's right. Because every instance of it represents two activations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or if you di if you discard it for ride line or for a PG or something, it doesn't hurt so bad. It yeah. seems like something you can easily like play three of just to make sure you see one at some point, or do you I assume you can search it also? Yeah, you, you can probably... search it off the ride line, but you probably want like two or three anyways. Just... You probably want to find a second mm -hmm. at some point. So... Yeah, two or three is probably going to be end up being a number. Yeah, but you definitely don't have to play four, which is great because it gives you extra room for tech cards. Does the grade one search it? Or does the grade two search it? Do you know? Grade one. Okay, never mind. You can probably get away with playing two. Mm -hmm. If uh, the grade two searched it, I would be hesitant. Uh, it's the grade one when it's thrown <laughs> upon by the grade two. Oh, okay. So oh, turn two, you do get it. So yeah. it is two or three because you could. So the, the danger of playing one is that some games you might just take it on damage, mm -hmm. and then you're like, you know, <laughs> anyways. <laughs> so you definitely don't want to do that. <laughs> so two or three, yeah. I mm -hmm. find it I find it interesting that like for these encounter ride lines, they're having an order go with it. Not all of them, but um, some of them. And uh, for the most part, these are really good. Like the um, the Paleman one can be played from Soul. And uh, recycled, whereas this one can't. Um, mm -hmm. But at the same time, this one is costless, so mm -hmm. uh, th th there's a you know ups and downs to it. But I, I think it's a, a cool way to play with the whole order um, mechanic that they it, it just didn't exist back when uh, the original of these cards did. Mm -hmm. Back when Lukier and uh, Vermilion were. You know, in Boomer Vanguard, orders weren't a thing until like the <laughs> end of V. So that's true. So. Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's move on to what's next? Drag Rider. Yes. Yes. Latifa. So, Drag Rider Latifa. Latifa. So uh, when it's placed on Rear Guard Circle, other than by a unit card's ability, if you play the normal order this turn, you sold last one. Look at your top five. Uh, call. Call something to rear guard circle with grade equal or less than your vanguard, or if it's an order, put it in your hand. Um, and then shuffle. Uh, when okay. it attacks a grade three or greater unit, it gets five k for each open circle in the same column, so it can get up to ten k. All right. Uh, uh, this card. So the wording of it is weird, but basically, you can call it from hand or off of an order ability. If you played an order this turn, you can do the thing. Uh, by a unit card's ability. Other and than by a unit card's ability. That, so yeah, I said other than by a unit card's ability. Yeah, so... Yeah. You can, I only heard unit ability, but... Uh, oh, so yeah, oh. like from hand or by an order ability, which is really interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, this card is cool. Uh, Dex, it would probably go in... Uh, 
Tamayura could, or not Tamayura. I mean, Tamayura probably could use it, but like you'd have to call it from hand, and like that's not that good. Uh, I meant to say Bob Sagra can Bob use Sagra. it because the that's arms card, because the arms cards are normal orders. Oh, this is a grade three rear guard with so much text. Grade two. Oh, sorry, grade two. My bad. It's yeah, so much text. <laughs> yeah, and for people wondering why won't he look at the thing on the side of the screen, he's looking at his own screen. Uh, people who are watching. Oh, that's this correct. Too. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. This <laughs> is for this is for you guys. Yeah, it wasn't up when you yeah. were reading it. So I'm yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, um, and then the other most obvious thing to put it in is just Vermilion because you can yeah. you can activate like eight orders. Yeah. If, so and Vermilion desperately needs ways to plus. So I am. Experimenting with this in Vermilion, I think it will probably be good there. It should also get big, huge because you just like Vermilion attack its column. Oh, that is pretty fun. Yeah, and then it's just like 20k, possibly 25 if you just wipe the board. Mm -hmm. card's sick. Yeah. yeah, so it'll get. Um... So it'll get plus 10 and then another 5 off of the order. Right. If you, All like, right. clear the whole board. But yeah, this card is pretty cool, and this is going to be kind of the theme of this set cycle cards, is orders. I think that's a neat idea. Um, they, mm -hmm. they were kind of poking at it at the last set, too, so I, I think they're, like, going into the pool more. <clears throat> yeah. No, like, I'm glad that cycle cards as a concept exist. Like, I think D has been pretty bad about taking advantage of the nation system being this broader all-encompassing thing for each individual ride line so the fact that they're making these really cool generic cards yeah is like neat and especially because when the nation system was announced that was one of the first things we got excited about was mm -hmm. oh cool now you don't have to wait uh you know six months for your clan to get uh supported now you can just okay great this is an example of generic support yeah um, now, at the same time, don't call it Inlet Pulsey with it. Oh, it's a triple R? Fuck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, Inlet Pulse was kind of on accident, right? It was. Um, but, at the, you know, I, I think for this, this is not like tying a whole deck together, which is great. Right. It's just a mm -hmm. nice piece of support. Um, all right, let's get into Dark Zone. Uh, Alright, so the first king is Avarish, Avaricious Demonic Dragon King Greedon Masks. There's uh, another one. So mm. This is another mask card. I think we talked about it a little bit uh, like a month ago or so. Mm -hmm. uh, so this card can only be written from a grade three with greed on its name, and it has a continuous skill that if uh, the number of damage in your damage zone for you to lose becomes seven, so the ability that greed on had, except he just has it all the time. As an act on van, you can remove a card with greed on from its hand solar drop. So, you know, the average cost of these mask cards. Look at top seven, choose a desire devil, and put it in your hand. Okay. And then auto at the end of battle they did attacked. If your soul has three or more cards with desire devil in their card names, put three standing rear guards into soul, stand this unit, and it gets power plus five thousand. So it gets a lot less power for the cost of keeping an extra unit on board. Mm -hmm. And it's a once per turn, unlike the original. That's true. It is a once per turn. Could the original Greedon do that twice though outside of premium? Or? I think I think if you had a, the right setup and like a billion counter blast. Okay. It is extremely high roll. I don't think it's realistic, but there are yeah. people lamenting the fact that you cannot do the double restand Greedon anymore. Yeah, you theoretically could do double restand Greedon before if you want to spend like four counter blasts or something. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Because you have to call out two of the desired devils that call things when they go in or no three probably because if, if you have five on board you pull four in three of them yeah. call something back that's yeah four. you would need three of yeah. them mm -hmm. which is that's a, so that's a four cb play right yeah yeah it's like i'm not entertaining that and it requires like a hyper specific setup mm -hmm. yeah but it, it, i guess it's funny uh, yeah for the rising nova double restand how many counter blasts does that cost I one. mean, you probably one. don't want to be using entertaining this one with rising, anyways, because you need three desire devils in your soul. No, yeah, not yeah, this. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah. like the original. 
uh, not very much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It mm-hmm. <laughs> just goes to show, play premium. Anyway, mm-hmm. uh, so what do we think of this compared to like the Zorga or the Leonor? Um, it seems slightly, it seems a bit worse than those ones. Uh, just because I think like you just don't have, I don't think the rear guards are very great. Oh. Yeah. Although the upside to this one is you don't have to play Desire Devils anymore because you just need the three in Soul, which is just your ride line. And then That's true. you can just play well, a bunch of like generic Dark Zones good stuff. Well, if you, you want some Desire Devils, at, mm-hmm. le- at least just to like hit the first ability. Yeah. Because otherwise, that ability you're you have just like some amount of advantage just on the table that you're just leaving out. That's true. But so yeah, I'm not sure what yeah, how like, many you'd end up in one general. More. Like leaving an extra thing on the board so you can make four attacks more consistently. Uh, not needing to rely as much on things to rebuild your board. Mm-hmm. And then being able to play more like generic stuff as a result of that. Like I think this greed on is more flexible. Like the floor is definitely a lot higher than the original one. Okay. Yeah, I can believe that. I it's completely uh, unrelated, but I believe his suit has more panache than the old one. Sure. So that's good. Um, I would. I'm not. Or I'm surprised that there is not a desire devil that's like after this attack, stand it, but it can't attack it yet. I like his old suit more. I think this one's a little gaudy, but I understand. <laughs> I mean, it, he, he's supposed to be kind of kitschy. He's, you know, yeah, you know. I, I mean, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't like this one as much. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. So, next card we have is Soul Oratorio Chaos. Uh, hey. Chaos. So, I remember this card existed before, but I could not tell you what the old one did, nor do I care. <laughs> um, so... It has an auto when the seat is placed by riding from approaching Fang's Chaos. You may soul charge three, then choose up to two cards from your soul, put one of them a- into your hand, call the rest to rearguard circle, and activate Persona Ride. Nice. So very similar to the Tamayora that we just looked at before. Mm-hmm. It has an act on Van once per turn. If your soul has 13 or more cards with different card names, bind an approaching Fang's ca- uh, Chaos from soul, so the old one, and until end of turn, all of your units get power plus 10,000, and this unit gets critical plus one. At the end of turn, ride the card bound for this cost as rest. And then glitter, yada, 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 yada. Yeah. Uh-huh. So quite interestingly, this is, you know, if you ride it on this, you get 20k to your front row, assuming that you meet 13 cards in soul. Right. And um, and it has a crit. Yep. Very big. Um, did the old one need 13 or was it a different number? It was 8, right? 8 and 13. 8 and 13, okay. This chaos is basically just the old chaos, but objectively better. So it ha- the same. It has a similar first ability. So the original one had an act ability that you Carablast one discard. Look at top three, one to hand, one to soul, one to rear guard circle. So this is basically the same thing for free, where you soul charge three, and then you can choose any two things from your soul instead of just what you searched, mm-hmm. and then. Uh, the original one was eight or more, you give one rear guard 10k, 13 or more different names, all rear guards get 10k, but that was when it attacked. So oh. this one does it in the main phase, which means because Mikani is a restandard, you give it all of the power to begin with, and then it okay. can just restand with the power. That is nice. Also, it gives itself power this time, and Ooh. it gets a crit. Okay, yeah, then good. I I remember Chaos just being completely looked over um, because it was kind of uh, nothing. Mm. I mean, it topped once. 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 Uh, was that part of a team or something? Yeah, it was a team thing, but it did then... top once, and I think the Chaos player had a good record. Okay, well, good for them. But I th- that that is a very much a drop in the bucket. So hopefully with this, th- this gives it a little, like, uh, injection. Yeah. Um, like, I think the deck looks cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hopefully, I'm not the... gonna pay for the grade one Mikani. Oh god, yeah, I know that that is such a pain for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, the grade three, which is what you're boosting anyway, is right. I mean, the grade three is like four dollars. Yeah, mm-hmm. that one's like not expensive. It's the grade one because Messiah uses it. Ah, there's the kicker. Um, all right, now we got uh, the grade two. Jewelry. All right, yep. So now we have fa- famed blazing demonic lady Orions. 
Grade two, uh, when it's placed on rear, other than by units card ability, if you played a normal order this turn, soul blast one, look at top five, choose and reveal up to one card as less than the Vanguard's grade and call it to rear. If it's a unit card, put it into your hand. If it's a unit, call it to rear if it's a unit card and put it in your hand if it's an order. Yeah, uh, so and same then when it, Yep. And then when it attacks a grade three or greater card, you soul blast three, draw a card, and it gets 5k. Um, so this is like a grade two. Gungram, but with like the cycle ability instead. <laughs> well put. Um, I was going to say, if it's something like the, so Lutier's order gives the skill to Lutier, which therefore means that the first effect doesn't activate. Mm -hmm. Just saying. for Because I know that that's going to happen. Um, or people are like, yeah, but it, it was done by an order. I'm like, yeah, but the red text is on the Vanguard now. So, uh, well, if if you play it from Soul, that still counts as playing the order. Not so much that the uh, the placed on rare other than a unit card's ability. Mm. That part. Oh that's, yeah, that's the kicker. Not the if you played an order. That that's fine. That was good. But like the um, so just keep that in mind, people. Either I mean, opponents of this card or yeah. I mean, you can only choose, like, a Pale Moon unit. You can only call, like, a Pale Moon unit anyway, so yeah, it's not like you could have called this. I know, but that's just an example of, like, something like that happening mm -hmm. with these, because, you know, maybe... Yeah, it's yeah. weird. So, keep that in mind. Uh, but, yeah, yeah this is kind of nice. <laughs> yeah, I am wondering, like, what deck this goes in, because, like, what deck, like, plays normal orders and can afford to, like, Soul Blast 4? Can afford to soul blast for it's not chaos, that's for sure. Um, yeah, like chaos can soul blast a little bit with duplicate names, but not like that much. Mm -hmm. Can't really be greed on either. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, because greed on uh, doesn't really play normal orders. Bruce, maybe no, because you need the no. final rush stuff now. You're doing vehemence, which uh, is the... yeah, because vehemence can't do or no. this one can't go because it's not a Diablos. Yeah, this card fe this card feels like it doesn't really have a home just because Dark State doesn't have anything that can like accommodate it. Yeah, it's unless we're really forgetting something. Uh, let's see. I'll match. Let's see. Unica doesn't have orders, or doesn't really play order. It has the mask. Mm -hmm. But like, I think Unica wants to be soul blasting for her own stuff. If I remember correctly, I don't know. Yeah, because I think the ability was always like Soul Blast 3 for Unica, even gotcha. on the mask. So, like, I don't think you can really afford it. So, like, <laughs> um, might have been caught in an awkward place, but I don't, I don't, that doesn't yeah. make it a bad card necessarily. Um, just, yeah, uh, mask is Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 3. So, yeah. you probably can't afford. You have the mask as the order you play, but like mm -hmm. I don't think you can afford that much soul blast for like both abilities. Right. You can maybe afford the soul blast one, but then you're not using like the draw and plus five K, so you're not really taking full advantage of the card. Mm -hmm. Uh you're jeweled, you need to soul blast four, and you don't really play an order. I guess the mask counts, but like you know, borrow Magnus, you're trying to hoard your soul. So yeah, like I can't think of any like Dark States archetype that can afford both costs and plays orders. Dang. What a face plant. And such a shame because the art is so cool. Um, yeah. Maybe yeah. this like maybe this could find the place in premium or uh, if we ever have like other or maybe like a new Dark States archetype that plays orders, uh, that's what I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, maybe if you're a Dark States player, pick up your playset and just kind of sit on it because it might come into play later. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Oh man, we're into Brandgate, and I am so excited about this. It's Glove World. <laughs> <laughs> so the first card we have is Gigant Gigant Arm Silhouette. So this so is the new Great Three boss. Has a bunch of random arms card that we looked at a while ago. Mm -hmm. yep. Has an auto and van at the beginning of your attack step. Soul Blast 1. Choose up to two of your rear guards with armed arms and their different card names and attach them to this unit. 
Move the attach units to Vanguard Circle a stand. They cannot attack. And attach units give power and abilities continuously. As, and, and they are moved to Rearguard Circle at, at res rest at the end of the turn. And at the end of the battle attack, you choose up to one of your attach, units attach this unit and move it to Rearguard as stand. Yeah. So you Legion and then Unlegion. I love it. Yep. yep. Um, I, I have both of them uh, ready here. Do, do you want to do R or L? Uh, yeah, sure. Which one? Uh, there we go. Uh, we'll do R then L because that's the order okay. they're in. All right. Go for so, it. So, Armed Arms R uh, is, a, is an auto on banner rear. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, if you have a grade two or greater Vanguard with silhouette, it's card name. It's counter boss one. Choose one of your opponent's grade two or greater units, retire it, and it gets power plus 5,000. And then the L is another grade two when it attacks a grade three or greater Vanguard. If you have a Vanguard with silhouette and it's card name, counter boss one, draw a card. So, so you can one counter boss power. one. Yeah. One is power and retire. One is draw. Yep. Um, if you give triggers to the arms that are on the Vanguard circle, <clears throat> it gives power to the overall yes. Yes. Vanguard. And then but, you move it and it mm -hmm. keeps the power. It, it will not give a crit if you give it. Yeah. Power. It will yes. get the crit, though. Just like but... Legion. <laughs> yeah. So yep. if you get a crit, you got to go crit to silhouette man, power to the arm, and yep. then move it so, yeah. afterwards. So yeah, uh, like draw triggers will be really good in this because you can just give it to the arm and you don't have to worry about anything else. Uh, front triggers obviously go to both arms, and so mm -hmm. silhouette just gains like 30k off of front. Uh -huh. But that does seem overkill when silhouette man is already swinging for like 30 to 60k. Your opponent's likely to just PG it. Well, they only got four of them, so you, you can only do so much, yeah. Mm -hmm. I am so excited for this just because uh, I love the episode where SpongeBob goes to Glove World, and I love the armor cards from Yu-Gi-Oh. This is the closest I can get. Um, <laughs> um, I don't know how good this is going to be because I don't know what other brand gate cards you fit it in with, but... Uh, uh, it's just generic stuff so. like Bobo Mine. Because, mm -hmm. like, at least one of your front row is always going to be an arm because you got to put it on an open circle, so you have to leave at least one front row to call it back to. Right. Uh, and then... Yeah, I don't... I think the deck is kind of, like, yeah. mid, just because, like, Silhouette gains a lot of power to no real benefit. Like, there's no crit, no guard restrict, like, nothing to really, like, put additional pressure. Mm -hmm. So it feels very similar to the likes of something like Grand Fia, where it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, you, like, draw cards, you can make a board somewhat consistently but you don't really have that oomph to like actually finish the game right um yeah and uh, m maybe the um the grade two helps it or whatever but like with Brandy being focused on set orders do they have something that is generic enough do you just uh, run the, the dart, the uh, like eclipsed moonlight, just for the the free probably. token? Yeah, probably because that's a way to get bodies for free. Mm -hmm. Also, like this one does have a set order in its ride line. Well, that's good. Um, so, yay! All mm -hmm. right, so let's move on to the next card is Poisoned in Paradise Ava. It's time, baby! Another Ava. So this unit is placed on uh, placed by riding from the Fountain of Knowledge. Ava, search your deck for a research card, put it in your hand, shuffle your deck, activate Persona Ride. And then when it attacks, you can bind the old Ava from your soul. Search your deck, hand or drop for up to one card with Obscu died in its card name. Ob yeah, and call it to rear. And that unit and this unit get power plus 5,000 on their turn. If you search your deck, shuffle the deck. At the end of the turn, ride the card bound as rest, or for this cost as rest. Uh, this card is arguably worse than the original. Yeah, it's not great. Mm -hmm. It's so, uh, yeah. The original one, you could like search your top whatever for like any card you want, right? So mm -hmm. you could get like PGs if you need to like counter charge. You could get something to do that if you mm -hmm. just, you know, if you wanted the additional research order, you could get that if you needed it. So, yeah, like, the original Evo just gets you so much more as opposed to, like, one research card. Yeah, and the second skill, yeah, so I guess they both call an Obsky died, so that's yeah. not really a gain on anything. 
but yeah, just the ability, like... It can call it from the drop zone, too, but, like, that doesn't matter. Yeah, the kind of the defensive power of Ava is kind of mm-hmm. quite strong, and, like, yeah. The main benefit of this one just seems to be just additional copies of your Persona ride. Yeah, pretty much. Is that so bad in the end, anyway? <laughs> like, uh, maybe. Uh, I, maybe, because, like, as the meta evolves, you want something that like definitively changes your deck the way that the other what that the other glitters have. Yeah, like chaos severely reduces like mm. how much costs you have, and because you don't have to discard anymore for the first ability, it's like a pure plus. Mm. And then Pamir is a big power boost. I see what yeah. you're getting at. Yeah, like chaos was a big power boost. All this gets is like an additional five k on the Obscudide, who was already decently big. Mm-hmm. But also, Eva was, like, the best positioned out of the five glitters, so arguably doesn't need to be any stronger the way the other ones do. Gotcha. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah. I-, I mean, like, could you have made Eva any more powerful without breaking it wide open? Because it was, it was uh, up on top there for a while. Yeah. Like, I think the only way is, like, if it went the chaos route of being essentially the same thing, but cheaper. Mm. Right? Like, if it just had, like, more or less the same first ability as the original Eva, just on ride. Yeah. But yeah, this is basically all it is. Is like, this is the... Or- it gets you an order for free, and then the on-attack skill is free, so you don't have to worry as much about your resources, but then... You're just sitting there with a bunch of open counter blasts, like, what do I do with this? <laughs> you either kill them or you die. That's how the game works. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. So the next card we have is Lady Fencer of the Bipolar Nebula. And this is the most confusing card I've read in a while. <laughs> Love this uh, card, though. So it has an odd. So remember all the rest of these dealt with uh, regular orders? Well, this mm-hmm. one deals with Blitz Orders. So when it attacks, if your drop is a Blitz Order, Soul Blast 1, and this unit gets power plus 10,000 on turn. Uh, and then auto, at the end of battle, this unit attacked a Vanguard, Counter Blast 1, bind this unit, stretch your deck up to one grade 2 or greater Blitz order without regard without regardless piece. Reveal it and put it in your hand, shuffle your deck. If your drop has a Blitz order, you may search for a set order instead of a Blitz order. What? Dude. Yeah, so... What Blitz orders? <laughs> I mean, they obviously are introduced some in this set, but like, yeah, for some reason... Uh, Brantgate and also Stoicaea, because these nations already deal with orders as part of their regular gimmick, they decided that these nations get to focus on Blitz orders instead. <coughs> so let's look at the Blitz order for um, that they introduced for uh, yeah. Brantgate, because I'm interested. Fluctuate Buster Bullets is the name of the card, which okay. seems awful. So choose, two, choose up to two grade two or greater units with different card names from your drop. Call them to guard circle. Choose one of your units to get power plus 10,000 on the battle. So it's a 20k it's, shield, maybe? Kind mm-hmm. of. It's uh, what, What's the um, the G guard for Grand Blue um, that calls two from drop to guard circle? Is this even good? Probably not, right? Probably not. not. Like, really? You can use it with Obscudides, who both have like 10k shield, I think. Ah, uh, so it could be up to 30, I see. Uh-huh. But, like, you're not going to play enough of these to be able to make Lady Fencer search what you actually want at any point. Mm-hmm. All right, like, so you'd have to play the full Blitz Order engine that they introduced, which is but, just a lot of room in your deck. Wait, isn't there only the one Blitz Order for Brankate in the set, or am I high? Uh, there's only the one Blitz Order, but they introduced a bunch of cards to support Blitz Orders. That's horrendous. Yeah. Like, Why would they choose to do such a thing? <laughs> the difference between this and something like the G-Guard um, <sighs> is that, like, heals already exist in the deck as is. Mm-hmm. Whereas this, you have to make room for it. Yeah. yeah. Which, ugh, gross. It seems garbage. Um, and it, it, it doesn't directly win you the game. And for people going, yeah, but it helps you, you know, live another day so that it can win. That's too much stuff, you know? It's too, uh, too bulky. Okay. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So, all right. Let's uh, let's take a look at Keter, which I have this week. So, Epid du Justice, uh, Thigrea. All right. Once again, um, let uh, do fromage. 
get out. <laughs> All right. Uh, so when placed on writing from a grade three with the Drea, so that's either of them, um, during rain phase, the turn may be regarded as having the same name as the card this unit wrote upon. Uh, search your deck for up to one unit with the Drea, put it into soul and shuffle. So you get auto persona ride no matter which one. Yep. And then uh, act on Vanguard Circle, discard a card from your hand, search up for up to one grade three unit with the Drea, and it's a uh, card named different from this unit from your soul, ride it as stand. If you rode a card, bind this card, activate Persona Ride, and you cannot ride until end of turn. So wow. basically, and the second Persona Ride stacks, yes. so you can just double Whoa. Persona Ride. Very yeah. cool. Plus 20 to that front row, baby. Um, or if you're playing the Order, plus 30, and you drew four cards. Oh my god. Uh, have fun decking out, though. Ugh, dude. Um where does this fit with the like you already run the two and you gotta go back and forth and stuff, so this like yeah. helps if you didn't draw the other one, right? Yeah. Uh really, this is just a way for you to do the same thing but bigger. Okay. Because what you do is you like so let's say you ride this on top of light the Greya, you uh put dark into soul, and then you like ride dark, activate the double persona ride, and then because it had the name of light, you activate the restand. I see. But yeah, this is just like the same thing, but bigger. Yeah. Um, it Like, Thedra was already kind of an unorthodox uh, ride line, so... Yeah. Interesting, interesting to see them uh, see them pull this off. Yeah, because, like, I don't know how else they do it, because both Thedra's need to specifically ride on top of the other version. Right. Um, and, uh, yeah, I... Not much to say about this. It's just, yeah. like you said, same thing but bigger. So, Yeah, this one's just weird because you have to play like 11 Persona rides now, so that's like <laughs> half the playable cards <laughs> in your deck. Yeah, definitely. Like for decks that run a lot of grade threes, you know how uh -huh. top-heavy that can be. Yeah, and then you have to like think about orders too, so just like half your deck space is gone just for like this re-ride thing. Right. And then you like still need to have rear guards, right? Yeah, to you know, attack with and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Perfect guards, things of that nature. So, uh, yeah, good luck to the Drea players. I know this is going to be a tall yeah. order. Uh, like, deck building seems weird from my uninformed perspective, but, like, the card seems powerful if you pull it off, right? Because even just double Persona, right, plus 20k to the front row is a lot. Yeah, it might be enough to just kill them, depending at what stage mm -hmm. of the game you're at. Um for, for by the way, I, I should probably say this at the beginning of any set review. For anything that we're like uninformed on or, or we're missing, please put it in the comments because you know we're not. Um, yeah, we're looking at this from a like we haven't played these before necessarily. We're just looking. Agrea is my nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why is she your nemesis? She ended my run at uh, BCS in twenty twenty two. Uh, remember that? Well, yeah, Ooh. but I didn't know that 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 made her your nemesis. I. I made that joke in the podcast episode. Yeah, and that was what, like, uh, six months ago now, almost? Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Time moves too fast. Please stop. Time moves too fast. Time stands still. Windows 97 brain. We're done. Okay, moving <laughs> on to... Uh... All right. Blonde Dezel got his encounter ride line, so I can hear Richard screaming from uh, Culver City. Sure. Uh... <laughs> yeah. so, so this might be one where we have to look at the whole ride line to get the full picture. I got the order set up. Let, let me let me get some. Let, let me go get uh, the the rest of him then. Uh, but there's Bowman, and then. Oh, really? We just needed Bowman. Okay. But... All right. I'll leave it at that then, because uh, Gareth doesn't really do all that much, right? Uh, like... Gareth just searches the order. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. So, uh, in hand, Esselin, blonde Ezel. <clears throat> so continuous on Van, you can only ride cards with Ezel in their card name. That's not foreshadowing. Um, at the beginning of your ride phase, if you have three or less units, Soul Blast 1, look at three cards from the top of your deck, choose up to one grade three or less unit card from among them, call it to rear, and put the rest on bottom in any order. So open you, rear. Open rear, sorry, but three or less units, I feel like that's... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then um, auto on van, when it attacks a grade three or greater vanguard, counter blast 1, look at the top seven cards of your deck, choose up to two grade three or less unit cards from among them, call them to open rear. And it gets uh, this unit gets plus ten chains until end of turn shuffle. Yeah. 
<clears throat> so this can get up to five attacks, but they're gonna hit like wet noodles because it only gives power to itself. Yeah. Um that persona ride is gonna be doing a lot of heavy lifting. Yeah. It also has the curse text, but that's probably warranted in this situation. Curse text meaning only when both players are in grade three, yeah. Yes. Okay. So yeah, uh, let's look at bow mains. Yeah, so um Knight of Superior Skills Bow Mains. This is the grade two of that ride line. Yep. Um so if your soul has Knight of Elegant Skills Gareth on Kins Crimson Lion Cove Kirf, blah, that's a tongue twister. Discard this card, discard a card from your hand. <clears throat> Choose up to one incandescent blonde as lion blonde as well from your ride deck. Ride it as stand and it gets drive minus one until end of turn. So you can ride up. Yep. Great. Cool. Awesome. <clears throat> okay, so this is a two things can be true. Like, I hate the concept of superior riding, just kind of in general because of B. Also, the superior ride sucks. <laughs> like, it's not that good because, like, going second, all you're doing is turning on all of your opponent's curse text. So, like, all the masks get their persona ride. Uh, Chronojet and Messiah can stride on you. Gondiva gets his fourth attack with that one grade two unit. So, like, going second, I think you just never want to do the, the superior ride because, like, you're going minus one just to turn on your opponent's deck. Uh, like, going first, you probably always do it, because you get the Persona Ride sooner. When they're on but, two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, like, you only make three attacks, and the deck doesn't get very good numbers anyway, so it's like, eh. Is this, dare I say, well-designed? Uh, less well-designed, more like, the game mechanics are different. Like, the problem with Superior Riding in V was that you got, like, 15 million gifts, right? Yeah. yeah. So, like, oh, I'm at grade two, and you have four front row circles. <laughs> and you drew off of them. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Great. Thanks. Uh, um, but that's good. That, that means that, like, the mechanics of the game keep it from getting too wacko. Uh, yeah, if you're going first or whatever. That's that's great. I love that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, th 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 there's like a balance there. And then the other effect is when it attacks. If you have a on rear, if you have an Ezel, you can give him five k, but he goes to bottom of deck at end of battle. So yeah, which you need to open up yeah. circles for Ezel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a, yeah. I think like that. Ezel on his own is fine. The superior ride is like actually kind of shit. Even if I can't. Even if I hate the idea of my opponent persona riding while I'm at grade two, I feel like it's it's kind of like the history strides, right? Where it's like when it happens, it's probably not that bad, but sitting across from it is miserable either way. Right. Um, Matt, any thoughts before I move to the um, the order no. that goes with it? Okay. So um, Gareth uh, gets this uh, order. When he when you ride when he's rode on top of by uh, Bowman, reign supreme king of beasts. So uh, he also gets an order like uh, Vermilion mm -hmm. did. Um, play this if you have an Ezlom card name. Uh, look at top seven cards. Choose up to one grade three or less unit card from among them. Call it to rear. It gets plus five k shuffle. Um, so it's a free search, free search, free call. Yeah, this feels like the deck where you only play like two of them mm -hmm. because yeah, this order is not that important and also like you just kind of need like space in the deck to put stuff in yeah so fine good uh mm -hmm. solid order and you know you get it as like a piece of uh just like piece of advantage mm -hmm. so um yay and then uh lastly for keter in the triple r you have a forefront knight table table yeah so grade mm -hmm. two, when placed on rear other than by unit card's ability, blah, blah, blah. Played in order, unit soul blast, check top five. Uh, choose up to one card, grade less or equal than your vanguard, and reveal it, call it to rear. And if it's, uh, if it's a unit card, then put it in hand if it's normal order, blah. On, auto on rear, when this unit attacks a grade three or greater card, if you have four or more units, this gets plus 10k until end of battle. I want to try playing this in Ezel just because, like, you have the order... Already, yeah. uh, the only thing is that Ezel uses a lot of soul already because, mm. like, Ezel soul blast one for his on ride, mm -hmm. and then 
Uh, there was something else that soul blasted. I don't remember right now. Uh, Dindrain does. Uh, yeah, but Dindrain is not the most important thing unless you're like spamming the grade one to draw. Right. Um, I brought this up to Richard because you know gold paladin. Oh right, Codwalla. Codwalla, thank you. Yeah, because um, Codwalla, you want you want to play some copies of because it retires itself. So that one's like end of battle attack, soul blast one, retire it, check top three, add a grade two or greater if you, and then I think that only activates if you have four or more units. Yeah, um, Codwalla only soul blast. It, it's um, Car mm -hmm. Care Bray. Yeah, the, the Shadow Paladin. I think that, you don't. I think you probably don't bother with Carbra, but yeah, Codwalla is a, is another soul blast. That's what I was thinking of. Mm -hmm. So but yeah, brought... Ezel's problem is just that it soul blasts a lot. I brought that up to Richard, and he's like, "There are things to get around it. Like there are cards that soul charge. You have Drilling Angel. Yeah, um, things I hate like that. Drilling Angel is just like the Keter Sanctuary staple of all time. It kind of is, yeah. But it, it's so uh, simple. It, it, it's um, yeah." There's it's also to... that grade two from set eight that like puts itself to soul to counter charge one. That's true. Got that too. Um, so yeah, options. I I think Ezel is, is also in a pretty good position. For, yeah. For the deck seems yeah. fine. It's not like crazy or anything. Yeah. But that's good. I think. Um, let's yeah. move on. Magic to of Alteration yeah. Turner. So at the end of the battle, it's a little boosted. If your damage zone has three or more face down cards, you put in the soul counter charge one. I do see you playing that one because it gets out of the way for Ezel and it's a soul charge and a counter charge. Which, ah, you need okay. which if you're going to be spamming the grade one that draws you cards, you probably need. Mm -hmm. So. Good. <clears throat> Stoichea time. It's your turn. Yeah, I stole it from you because you don't play Stoichea, basically. Well, shut up. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Me. Uh, mm. Also kind of accurate, but not really. Um, you only play Magnolia, right? Like, you don't know much about any of the other ones. I played Zorga for a time, but yes. Uh, yeah. So, Mr. Arc Lulu Zulu. Uh, Lulu Sewell. God, I hate this name. I, know. I hate all of these Mr. Arc names, but that's going to be great when I'm playing against other people that don't know what the deck does. Uh, so, when it's placed on Vanguard Circle, look at top seven cards. Choose a grade three or less unit card from among them. Call it a rear guard circle shuffle. If you have five or more units, in so any units, including your vanguard, uh, your opponent discards a card from their hand. Okay. And then when it attacks a vanguard, counter blast one. Choose one of your rear guards with Mr. Arc in its card name. Return it to your hand. Choose one unit card with Mr. Arc in its different name uh, than the one returned and call it a rear guard circle. Ooh, that second one looks a little sus uh, mm -hmm. to me. Uh, so the idea is that they all have on place ability, so you're just like bouncing all of them around. Yeah. Um, you just never do it with itself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, this deck is funny. Uh, we talked about it a little bit before when we just went through the whole archetype, but this deck is very funny because all of the cards are really, ob all of the other Mr. Arc cards are just really obnoxious. They're mm -hmm. one of them, like, stops you from intercepting the other one just stuns a unit mm -hmm. uh right. one of them is like a draw so the idea is like i think you can get to like five units on your grade three turn pretty consistently not a lot of decks have early removal and then the whole ride line like calls itself out so it should be really easy to get to the five units early on and then you know so you can, like, make four attacks, you force your opponent to discard a card. Later turns, it's going to be a lot harder, because your opponent can actually, like, interact with your board. Mm -hmm. But I like this deck. It's just, like, really funny and obnoxious, where you're like, alright, that can't intercept, and it's stunned. Also, discard a card. <laughs> it's, um, I, I like the art on it. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I could see myself playing it, just for the, the obnoxious factor, but, um... I I think in a world with uh, with Vermilion and then what was the one from uh, from uh, Gandiva Gandiva thank you uh, it, it's gonna have a, a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually, like the deck also gets like a decent amount of advantage because the Grade Three draws a card, so you have like a free one on play. The Grade Three draws a card. You could afford to play something like 
uh, Rotting Usurp or Maple, as long as you can get, like, two other Mr. Arc names on the board. Right. And then, like, the Ride Line, because the Ride Line called themselves out, you get, like, three units for free on your Grade 3 turn, which means you save a lot of cards in your hand. Yeah. So, I think this, in terms of, like, hand advantage for a deck that needs to have a board, this is probably the best off out of all of them. Simply because it, like, gets so many of them for free early on. Yeah, that's true. Magnolia don't got, like, Magnolia's like, all right, call the top card, and you're like, call my OT. Great, thanks. <laughs> yep. But yeah, I do think the deck's probably just, like, mid overall. I think it doesn't have enough power. <laughs> Same with Ezel. Like, all your units just kind of hit, like, wet noodles because none of them gain enough power. Yeah, I I think this is going to be something where you got to sit down, go into deck log, and like start looking at all the options that you have as a nation. Um, yeah, before I you mean, decide to build it. Yeah, part of the problem too is like it needs some amount of the archetype name, so you can only bounce back Mister Arcs, and all of them require at least three Mister Arcs to do their thing. So like, yeah, got got to be start running that uh, condensation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh. yeah. You could also run, uh, what's it called? Frozen Resentments. That's true. Um, so, love the art. Yeah. Oh man, it's your boy. Yeah. The planty boy. Uh, Avira says in Flash, Rora. So, like all of the other glitters, uh, when it's placed by riding on the original Rora, call up to two plant tokens, they get red text. When retired from Rear Guard Circle, draw a card. And until the end of your opponent's next turn, oh. and then activate Persona Ride. That's kind of uh, nice. On attack, bind the original Aurora. Choose one of your glitter rear guards. So always Momo K gets 5K, and this unit gets a crit. At the end of that turn, ride the unit bound for this cost as rest. Not bad. It's pretty good. Yeah. So similar to Tamayura, like Aurora benefits a lot from riding the original because like Tamayura had the plus 5K, and then Aurora has the defensive ability to get 5K power by retiring a token. Mm hmm. So this is one where, like, the re-ride feels like it matters. Right. Uh, and then I already talked about Rora. Like, the main problem I have with this card is it calls fewer tokens. So, especially because the meta has so much removal right now. Trying to find, like, enough things to retire for Momo K so that you get good numbers and still have a board can be difficult when you have fewer tokens to work with. Okay. Especially because, like, one of your consistency cards is the set order that searches Radelina that also needs to retire something. Mm. So the deck just retires a lot, and only having two tokens instead of three and not being able to choose when you call them means that, like, setting up your board gets really awkward, even though you have the benefit of the draw. So I think this card, like, this card is still good. But, like, the deck does have some awkward parts about it. Also, I want to get rid of Signpost Fairy. That card mm -hmm. only exists to be retired by Momo K, and I really wish I could just have an effective card in my other column instead. Mushrooms! No, uh... Yeah. Well, that's the thing. You play four of the mushrooms, so you have, like, 12 cards in your deck. Oh, 16 cards in your deck now with this one. It's, like, the four roar up, eight Rattalinos, four of the set order. So that's like 16 cars out, and you only have like 10 left. Yeah, that that is pretty uh, clunky. Um, all right, Matt, anything? No, it seems. Uh, I mean, it's pretty similar to like, like like uh, Ruby said, uh, vaguely similar to the other ones, but the other Roroa has kind of a less win the game effect, which is what mm -hmm. you're trying to do at some point. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I think this one helps you win the game more. Uh, the extra 5k on Momo K actually matters a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like, you'd be surprised how much the difference between like 25 and 30k is for Momo K. Well, it's either... Uh, it, it's the difference between one and two cards. Yeah. Uh, but also, right. that power translates to both Rattalinas. So, hmm. you know, here like, okay, attack for 30, attack for 50, attack yeah. for 53. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. And also, like, you pretty much don't lose that defensive ability, right? Like, you yeah. Just like, you just get you just, it back. You just get both. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pretty nice. Yeah. All right. There's and then your... Love the we have yeah. the cycle card, Hallucinary Morpho. So on a t 
so it's this identical, is right? The, it's identical to the Brand Gate one. So on attack, if your drop has a Blitz Order or Soul Blast gets 10k, at the end of the battle attacks, counter blast one, bind it, grab a grade to a greater Blitz Order without Regalus piece. Or if you already have a Blitz Order and drop, you get a normal order instead. Uh, so this one, it made the most sense for them to choose Blitz Orders because if they chose normal orders, it's just an instant Zorga play. Uh, an, an instant Zorga staple. Yeah. Um, th- yeah, like, like there's a lot more infrastructure already in place, and they're not trying mm-hmm. to like randomly put this stuff up from the ground. Uh, yeah, this late in the game, so to speak. No, nah, well, no, because this one's real all about blitz orders, which none of the Stoakea decks is just like Stoakea was the normal order nation for the longest time. Yeah, so it does feel like, oh, you already use normal orders for everything here, have blitz orders. Yeah. Um, and it's a shame you can't get uh, something with Regalus piece because the bl- the blitz order that like cancels out OTs is like kind of decent ish. Mm-hmm. So uh, it- it'd be fun if it was like you can get a uh, greater greater blitz order without Regalus. Like it even qualifies it as blitz order. Like just let them let them get that one. That that would probably yeah. make it more playable than uh, the doll or the cup. Yeah. So this just suffers from the same problem as the Brandgate one, which is that like blitz orders aren't very good, and any blitz order you have is always competing with your one activation of Sanctitude. Right. Um, I think until they uh, make blitz orders get advantage in some way, which... Yeah. Either like blitz orders coming from outside the deck because you don't want to compromise deck building too much, mm-hmm. or like the ability to play more than one a turn. Because if your hand is like a blitz order plus uh, sanctitude, then you're just like, okay, so do I want the PG or do I want this like 10k shield? Yeah, it would be very tragic if you like play the you know 10k shield and then you get a draw trigger and draw sanctitude and you're like, mm-hmm. okay, well, this is dead. But, yeah, um, like I really think, like, I understand the once per turn on like normal orders because there's a lot of powerful ones, but like the need for defensive power and in general, just how like unsuccessful blitz orders have been, I feel like they should try experimenting with lifting the restriction to see what happens. Yeah. Um, I, I've never really been a fan of the once per turn thing. I see where they're coming from, but it makes it very hard to, uh, you know. Yeah. And also, like, uh, every other form of order already has ways to, like, cheat out their orders. There's, like, nothing in D right now that, like, revolves around Blitz orders entirely, so there's nothing that lets you cheat out Blitz orders. No, or do anything at, with them? Not at the moment. Um, it'd be interesting if uh, Zorga had that ability for Alchemagic, where you could do the Blitz Order and then uh, Alchemagic's a different Blitz Order on top. Um, all right, Orange Zorga, <laughs> whatever. Uh, so, yeah, I... Oh, well. Um, getting into the double R's. So. Okay, Dragonic Death Scythe. So during your turn, if your opponent has no front row rear guards, gets 5k. Uh, on attack, if you have a grade through your vanguard with only Narukami, Soul Blast 2, bind one of your opponent's rear guards. If you did not bind a card, draw. Sure. Yep, this is yeah. a Narukami card. Yeah, it is certainly Dragonic Death Sight. Uh, it's fine. Yeah. I it really is. don't know what else to say about this card. It's mostly unremarkable. Yeah. Uh, it is boringly competent. There we go. AI Boring, generated Vanguard card. Boringly competent. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, All right. Anyways, next we have Stealth Fiend Iza Sao. Uh, so when it's placed on Rearguard Circle, if you have Shoujo Doji Vanguard Counterblast One, look at top five, choose a Stealth unit, call or put it into your hand and shuffle. And then, when it's put from rear guard circle into your soul, choose a face-up card in your opponent's bind zone, bottom of the deck, your vanguard gets 5k. Uh, so this card is good. It's, uh, it's advantage for Shoujo Doji, lets you, like, search anything you need. Uh, it is a free removal from your opponent's bind zone, so Shoujo Doji's thing 
is yeah. like you bind two things with stealth from your soul, and then you bind two of your opponent's rear guard circles. Mm -hmm. but, and then so this and then on attack Shoujo Doji eats two, calls a card from bind zone to rear. So what you do is like you bind this thing, you can remove one of your opponent's bound cards, and then you call something off of Shoujo Doji, and then you give 5k to your Vanguard, which was one of the problems with that deck is that the only thing that got power was the thing you called off of Shoujo Doji, so making your Vanguard a bit bigger, a bit more threatening is nice. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I'm just a little afraid of Shoujo Doji in general, so I'm not, I'm, I will keep silent for this. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think this is like really good. Like, the deck has pro Shoujo Doji has problems with gaining advantage because you only have one card that draws, and it, and that one only works if it's called from Bind Zone, I think. I see. Okay, so uh, uh, game plan B aggressive, B, E, aggressive. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, unprecedented, unprecedented was the one. Uh, when it's placed by a unit card's by your card's ability. If you have Vanguard or Shoujo Doji Atama, your you soul blast one draw. So that was the grade three from set eight. Uh, so yeah, basically only works when you call it off of Shoujo Doji's effect. So that was uh, like what you have like one draw in the deck and it's conditional. Well, that's pretty rough. So yeah, the advantage off of this one was much needed. Right on. Um yeah. get rid of that. So, so. Yeah, so this one is just one that's placed on Rearguard Circle in general, so, like, from hand or by Shoujo Doji's ability. Uh, same with this Grade 1, Stealth Rogue of Chain Road Kagechika. So, uh, when it's placed on Rearguard Circle, uh, choose a card with, with Stealth in its card name from Drop, put it into your soul, so basically, Fork Tail, but from your Drop Zone instead. Yeah. Uh, when your other unit is placed on Rearguard Circle from the Bind Zone, if you have a Vanguard or Shoujo Doji, uh, put it into Soul Draw card. There's not a drop, although it's not a plus. It's a... Mm -hmm. that one's um, more of a cycle, but that's like yeah. okay in this deck where you need like soul to keep binding for Shoujo Doji, right? Um, yeah. Hopefully, this doesn't become a random thirty dollar double R. Uh, probably not because you can only put stealth cards, right? <sighs> I'm just mostly talking about Forktail doing that. Yeah, but Forktail is uh, also way cheaper now. Because oh, people realize the card was bad. Yeah, it's just kind of a meh, meh thing. Uh, or um, the decks that it's in are bad. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, what's next? Beat up Draco Kid. Yep, beat up Draco Kid. So when you if you play a normal order, it gets five k. Uh, when it's placed on rear guard circle, counter blast one, search deck or drop zone for one a serious fight. Reveal it, put it into your hand. So all of the cycles kind of have their own engine. So they they give you like the triple R cycle card, this double R that searches out like a norm a rare order. So serious vice with soul blast one, uh, retire one of your opponent's rear guards, and then at the end of the turn you can discard a card to take this card from your drop zone and put it back in your hand. Okay, it's okay. Like, the whole point of this is to give you, like, an engine so that you have, like, the normal order guaranteed for this series of cycle cards. Right. Okay. I mean... Like, I don't think any of the orders are good. Me neither. Um, they, they seem kind of, uh, whatever. I me. mean, this would be nice for budget if there's, if you could find, like, a grade three for these decks to live in. Right. Right. Yeah. Popper Vanguard or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Okay, I hate how some things will put the tab at the end, some will put it at the beginning. Try to keep it in order. All yeah, right, Dark Ready Stakes. for some not Gear Chronicle cards? Yep. <laughs> All right, so we have Blazing Gunfire Colossus, which is not a Gear Chronicle card, but is a Dark States card. So when it's placed on Rear Guard Circle by your opponent, by your Vanguard's ability, you can counter Blast 1, draw a card, and it gets 5k. And when this unit attack hits a Vanguard, if your Vanguard is grade 4 or greater, you counter charge 1. So it is a Gear Chronicle card. Yeah. But it's not a Gear Chronicle card. Mm-hmm. No. I mean, it seems like okay. It seems fine. I don't know if you want to do this over upstream into whatever the grade 1 was for Chrono Jet. And before, this is like a 1 out that you just throw in. 
Yeah, probably. probably. Maybe I find mean, it. Maybe get it sometimes. Yeah. But that's the like, hit to counter charge just kind of sucks. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it gets yeah. like really big with Fate Rider. Yeah, that's true. You can use this in uh, Pale Moon too, in yeah. premium. It took me so long to figure out where this guy's head was. Wait, where? It's not up here. No. That's, okay, that's his hand. That's his elbow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Isn't that's this? his arm. So his head is like next to it. This, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, because there's the steam pipes and then shoulder. Uh, sure. Arm, right I believe you. <laughs> With your hand. All right. <laughs> All right, so next we got Inciting Corruption Aga Man Manaf. Uh, this is a grade two for the Chaos Archetype. When this unit is placed on rear, if you have a Vanguard with Chaos, a card name, counter plus one, look at top two, choose one, put it in your hand, put the rest in the soul. Okay. And then in your soul, when your unit with Makani in its card name is placed on rear, if you have a Vanguard with Chaos in its card name, discard a card from hand, soul charge one, call this card to rear guard, and it gets boost. That's pretty good. Yeah, this card is, like, pretty sweet. Yep. Kind of does two things the deck needs to do. It kind of filters out your... Put cards into your soul, because you need 13 with different names. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's a extra booster that can trade itself out if you have two of them in soul or something. Yeah. yeah. And it, like, draws you a card. So it's yep. just, like, advantage. True enough. All right. Magic Colony-looking motherfucker. Look at this thing. Yeah, well, I don't know. What the, I, don't, I actually oh. am not going to think about what's going on in that card too much. All right, let's just. It's move got on. arms. All yeah. right, so the next card is Jovial Juggler, uh, i.e., not a Pale Moon card. It uh, is definitely yes. not a Pale Moon card. So uh, it is a grade one eight k. Uh, so, uh, has a continuous effect in Soul when your Vanguard would be chosen from your when a card would be chosen from your Soul by your Vanguard's ability. This card may be chosen as a grade zero. I don't know what that. I don't know what claim that could be for. I mean. When this unit is placed in rear from soul by the activability of your vanguard with only Pale Moon for its clan, put another rear guard into soul. Choose a unit from your soul and call it your rear guard and to, and, and in turn put the unit that's called by this effect into soul. So it's kind of purple trapezes, but not really. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, this yeah. card is bizarre. I feel like it's like very it's, nice. It's, it's a Pale Moon card, which is it, you know, except in name. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I just want to say, like, this has been clarified already. There are a whole bunch of cards that need to, like, soul blast different grades of things, but those don't specifically choose a card. Right. So this will not work for anything except Luke here, basically. Yep. Um, yeah, a uh, big, big fan of this, because, like, there's always that awkward thing where, like, it, you know, you call three different grades, and you have your one, your two, and you're like, mm -hmm. great, I either call this zero, that doesn't do anything, or I don't really have a three. Mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. so th th this is nice um also lets you like um like if there was like a, a call only from hand effect you can like put that in and get something else out that's important right you know? yeah so, yeah very nice good job so next we have famed harsh demonic lordling bathim so continuous on rear if you played it normal under this turn it gets 5k and an auto when it's placed on the rear. Counter boss one, search your deck or drop for up to one. Reception of the famed demonic mansion. Reveal it and put it in your hand if you search your deck so your deck. So let's read this. Reception of the famed demonic mansion. It's a grade two uh, normal order. Yep. Yeah. You may soul charge one, choose one of your units, it gets 5k. At the end of turn, discard a card from your hand. Uh, choose this from drop, put it in your hand. Yeah. So it's like repeatable soul charge 5k. And you can play an order every turn basically for the rest of the game if you want to yeah it's like fine the same thing with the like dragon empire one it's like not that good but it's a nice cheap option and it means that all of the cycle cards have their own like engine built in yeah, yeah. if there was actually a, a big payoff for playing an order every turn these would be a lot more enticing mm -hmm. yeah. uh but there's like the payoff is small generally it's like oh some units get plus 5k not worth doing this mm -hmm. every time right this yeah. is probably one of those things where, like, it'll probably get built on in the future, hopefully. Probably. Um, but or like, completely now, forgotten about. <laughs> most likely. But at yeah. least, uh, well, I mean, you say that, but, like, this set also just supports, like, the most random popper cards imaginable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no oh, complaints man. here. Um, but, yeah, so this seems like a popper Vanguard thing where it's just like, all right, the order engine is probably going to be really cheap. 
So the next thing we got here is Absage Adler. And despite its appearances, this is actually an Ava card for reasons. Seriously? Okay. Uh, when this unit is put on Guard Circle, if your Vanguard is a Glitter with Ava in its card name, choose up to one card with Obscudide in its card name from your drop and call it to Guard Circle or put it into hand. If you put the card to hand, choose a card from your hand and discard it. Well, there's like almost never a reason for you to actually put it in your hand, right? Because the new Eva can just call it from the drop zone, and like you always had the ability to just get it back with the grade one research, anyways. Yeah. Uh, this is very funny. Yeah, and then also it says put, so you can do it when intercepting too. Mm -hmm. um, True. That is very nice. Um, yeah. All right. So next card we have is. What fulfiller of spherical harmony? Yeah. Yep. Uh, there are. There, is there? Okay. There's one sphere there. There's one almost sphere. It seems. Yeah. There's like and some of those are not spheres, but anyways. <laughs> um. So it's a grade one for Brand Gate. When this unit is retired from guard circle, soul blast one, choosing to and uh, call this unit to an open back row rear guard circle as rest. And then an auto at the end of battle, this unit boosted. If your Vanguard is grade four, put this unit to soul. Choose one of your units, and it gets power plus 5,000 on the turn. Okay. Messiah support. Sure. I mean, uh, yeah. It's cheaper than Mikani. That's true. Fair enough. That's true. You're, no, you're right. <laughs> cheaper than Mikani, and uh, there's the red rings, you know. Yeah, and it's pretty yeah. the aesthetic, um, I guess. Yeah. So fun. And then uh got another monster. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we have Divergence Monster Lazarek. Uh is a grade one. Uh when this is discarded from your hand or deck during your turn, if your order zone has two or more research cards, counter bless one and call this card to an open rear. An auto when this unit attacks or boosts, if your unit you may have this unit get power plus five thousand. And if you do, retire this unit at the end of battle. What? But why? That's so weird. Um, I know the monster stuff is like recycling. It's just weird. Like monster stuff is recycling. Yeah. Like Archite needs to call monsters, but like, but it doesn't have to kill itself. You may yeah. ha have it get five k, sure. but if you do, then it dies. Uh, why? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I know a lot yeah, of. I have no game. idea why it retires itself. Archite doesn't do anything that needs it to retire itself. Uh, I know for that first effect, um, you do discard a lot, so that's at least good for the. Um, yeah, you discard a lot because of the yeah. research, I think. Mm -hmm. So that's nice that you can at least use it for uh, a warm body. Um, but the thing for killing itself at the end of the battle. Don't know. Uh, my friend Peter at Locals plays monsters. I'll have to ask him. Um, like the monster deck is kind of mid. It is, but it's not the worst thing in the world. It's kind of fun to watch. Uh, mm -hmm. And then this is for Silhouette, this next one. Yay. So the next card we have is Bustling Mechanic Rodney. That's a great one. Uh, if your Vanguard at if you have a vanguard, if you have a vanguard attached this turn, it gets power plus ten thousand. Right, another fucking keyword I have to keep track of. Oh my god! <laughs> An auto and backer of rearguard circle. At the end of the battle, your vanguard with silhouette in its card name attacked a grade three or greater vanguard. Curse if your front row has no rear guards, soul blast one and stand this unit. So you can do this before you move the arm. Yes. Yes. Okay. And then it has oh, a ten k booster. Yep. All right, that's that's not bad. Yeah, it gives you another big yeah. column, which is not yeah. bad. Um, or if it's by itself, it's hitting eighteen on its own. So mm -hmm. nice, not bad, Rodney. Not bad. Uh, it does require opponent to be grade three, of course. That's true. Curse text. Uh, retrospective dragon. Uh, so one placed on rare. If you have a vanguard with Thedrea, uh, soul blast and discard a card from your hand. Search your deck for up to one uh, grade three or grade two set order. Why did they a... word it like that? <laughs> Just do grade two or greater. Like, <laughs> all right, reveal it, put it in your hand, and shuffle. Um, and then auto on rear at the end of the battle. The student attacks. Retire another rear guard. Choose one of your glitter units. Gets plus five k. 
Um, Earth theme is really mid. It is. It's very kind of whatever. Um, they're, they're, you know, Thagraya's orders are pretty good, though, right? Yeah, Thagraya has good orders. Just like yeah. uh, you probably don't need the one that lets you like rewrite your Thagraya now that you just have the double persona ride, anyways. Yeah. Wait, the one I'm the one that you're uh, saying is that the one where she's got like the weird evil eye and she's like, <laughs> like yeah, that one's like over. not. Yeah. I don't yeah. think anyone plays that one because it's just like rewriting your Thagraya like turn three barely matters. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, for the Persona Ride or whatever. Anyway, so great. Moving on. Uh, I mean, it doesn't even activate Persona Ride because you're doing it in the main phase. All right. I forget that that's how that works, where it has to be during the the ride phase, unless it specifically says like activate Persona Ride. Yeah, or and it has to be like normal riding. Mm -hmm. All right, Magic of Colored Fires Larolin, um, Grade 1. Uh, when placed on rare other than during the battle phase, if you have a Vanguard with only Genesis for its clan, all right, Counter Blast, Soul Blast, draw a card, choose a card from your hand, reveal it, call it R if it's a unit uh, card with grade equal or less to your Vanguard, and discard if it isn't. Um, I find it interesting that Genesis does that, where it's like, if you don't... Uh, have the correct grades just discarded as if someone's gonna be like, "Oh man, I couldn't, couldn't find it. Guess I'll have to discard." Mm -hmm. uh, and then auto on rare at the end of the battle th that this unit boosted. If your vanguard is only Genesis, put two rare guards in the same column as this unit into your soul. Choose one card with only Genesis from your drop and put it into your hand. So this card does everything. Kinda, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So it's like card advantage uh it can put like chamomiles back into your soul so you can call it back out again so yep. it's just like sitting there on the board uh it gets you discard fodder or yeah. minerva yep yeah this card just does everything it's not bad nice uh nice big old band-aid on minerva which is like one of those decks where like i i it's not too bad i just think think it needs a little nudge i don't know if this is the nudge but it's something I mean, Minerva's, uh, like, fine right now. Yeah. I think um, it gets less fine when Gondiva comes out, but, like... <laughs> oh. Everything gets less fine when Gondiva comes out. comes out. Yeah, exactly. Um, oh, yeah. This is, like, a Konat. This is a Yu-Gi-Oh card. You know how uh, they print cards like Math Mech Circular that they do everything your deck wants to do? Yeah. That that's how they uh, support like older arch archetypes in Yu-Gi-Oh because mm -hmm. they're so old they're like we got it we you know we're catching up with fifteen years of uh, yeah. card design. All Anyways, right. here's a skill drain. Yeah, listener of truth din drain. Uh, so eight K when placed on rare. If you have a vanguard with only one clan, soul blast two counter charge one. At the end of the battle that this unit boosted, if you have a vanguard with Ezel in its card name, put one other rear guard on in the same column as as this unit on bottom and stand this unit. So. Okay, so if I remember correctly, it having the gold paladin clan means you can't mix it with other clans, right? So far as I can tell, yes, although there's someone at my locals who uh, uh, steadfastly thinks that you can't. Um, I will I will check the comprehensive rules and get back to you. Thank you, because I am sick of going back and forth with him on this. Uh yeah. It's not but bad. Like, that defeats the purpose of having clans on these cards if they were just going to be generic anyways, right? Yeah. Um, because then you would just tie it to the name instead of the, the clan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, this card's fine. Like, if you spit, there's a grade one for Gold Palo, and there's like one that's placed on rear. It, you can counter blast, draw a card, get plus 5k. So if you spam that a lot, you're going to need the counter charge. Yeah. And then uh, it gets a card out of the way for Ezel. Wait, I'm confused. Why would this matter if you even if it was generic? Because it says that your Vanguard needs to have only one clan. Yeah. Well, we were wondering if you could put it in like other clans, which I'm pretty sure you can't because it's a gold paladin, right? Use with like Minerva. Now, granted, in premium, that first effect can be used with whatever. Like, yeah, with anything. Yeah. But, but yeah, like we're talking I'm, about for state. We're talking about stuff like putting this in MLB or something, right? Yeah. I see. Yeah. Um. Because there was that grade two that with the scythe that let you uh, recycle things from drop. Um, yeah. And which, you all you all think you can or can't? I'm pretty sure you can't because it's like a gold paladin, right? So you couldn't just put this uh, into like phantom blaster or something. 
yeah, gotcha. because it's uh, Keter and Gold Paladin. Now, granted, Scythe Guy is just Keter, so you can do that mm -hmm. with anybody. You can do that with this. You can do that with. Yeah. yeah, I'm just confused by the wording then. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's why it says, like, if your Vanguard has only one clan, rather than saying if your Vanguard is a Gold Paladin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so but I got it. To that, I say comment section, please start arguing. Uh, yeah, I'm interested in the clarification as well. It's unclear to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, again, to clarify, it's not so much the card text; it's the fact that it is a gold paladin. Can you use that? You can't use this with, say, Genesis, for example. That first effect, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure we had the same conversations with like Kay and Bedivere. We we I believe did. Um, I don't know how crazy that can get though. So. We'll find out. Let's let's move on. Knight of Brave Advance uh, Tarugan. So, uh, if you play the normal order this turn, gets uh, power five, plus five k. It's grade one. Sorry. Um, and then when placed on rear, counter blast one. Search your deck or drop for up to one. Uplifting him. I'll get to that in a second. Reveal it and put it in your hands and shuffle. So uplifting him. It's grade two order, which I love the art on. Uh, it's a soul blast. Uh, choose two of your rear guards. They get plus five k to end the turn. At the end of that turn, discard a card from your hand, choose an uplifting him from your drop and put it in your hand. So remember the wet noodles theorem? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe? Uh, like, I mean, you have to play yeah. this like shitty order. Yeah, which you can search, I guess, but yeah. Um, I see so what you're like another at. counter blast, too. Yeah, another counter blast and a soul blast. Yeah, yeah. wet it noodles. Soul blasts a lot already. Yeah, wet noodles. Uh, that's probably what I'm going to call this episode. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next one is uh, Affectionate Hunter, right? Yeah, Affectionate yeah. Hunter Matthias. So it was placed on rear guard circle from hand. Uh, if you have a grade 3 or greater rear, uh, uh, Soul Blast 1, retire 2 other rear guards. Oh, it was 2? Two. Uh, 2 is a grade 2 or less card from drop zone, call it to rear guard circle. And then at the beginning of the battle phase, if you have a unit with Rora's card name and a unit with Radalina and his card name, call a plant token. So this always calls Radalina because that's basically your only option. Right. Um, I don't even... Good, so bad. The problem is, like, it's like another retire in a deck that already retires more than you can make units for. Mm -hmm. So I've just been playing Maple instead because, like, I just need the body. Gotcha. Like, this card is nice because it calls a plant token back, so you can at least boost it, but, like, yeah. Like, Rora as a deck, you're, like, you have to retire, like, some amount for Momo K, usually at least, like, two, just to get it to, like, an okay number. You have to mm -hmm. retire for the set order, and then if you're, at like, adding this on top of that, like, you're only making so many units, so you can get, like, the two tokens off of Rora. You get, like, two more off of the mushrooms. It's just, like, trying to manage your rearguard economy is, like, the thing that you have to do with the deck. I think the deck is, like, fine in terms of, like, offensive, and now that we can draw more cards, like, defensive power, it's just, like, trying to make your turn happen properly and managing, like, how many bodies you have on your board is going to be, like, the bulk of your gameplay. It's a treadmill. Yay! Mm -hmm. Love the art on this, though. Very Robin Hood. Um, yeah. Alright. There's the, uh... This giraffe turtle thing. Yeah. These cards are so crazy looking. Yeah. <laughs> so, when it's placed on Rearguard Circle, uh, if you have three or more Mista Arc, it gets 5k. Then you can Soul Blast 1. Choose one of your opponent's rear guards. They cannot stand during your opponent's next stand phase. Okay, Magic Colony. I see what you're getting at. Uh, if you have a great third grade of anger with Mr. Arc, you can bind a rear guard with Mr. Arc and its different name from this unit called the Bound Cart. So it basically like, resets the on play for any of your Mr. Arc cards except itself. Okay. Um, and then it's nice that you only need one other rear guard. Because mm -hmm. it counts the it's three units with uh, yes Miss Dark. Um, so, uh, yeah, nice nice uh, rear guard support. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it's completely xenophobic, so no no splashing. That's yeah. Else. Um, all right. 
Maelstrom support. Yay. Yeah. Uh, tier Knight, that I or an F? Yeroclis. That, that's, uh, that's an I, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So when this unit is placed on Rearguard Circle, if you have a Vanguard with only Aqua Force, discard a card. Uh, search your deck for or drop zone for Blue Storm Armada, put it into your hand. And then if you search the deck, shuffle. Card is like fine. I don't know if you have room for it. Mm. So the problem is like the Blue Storm Armada is more important now that we just have more decks that blow up your whole board. But like Maelstrom's thing is like position swapping. So yeah. you have like Wheel Assault, you have the new like promo card. So I don't know if you have like space for it on the board just because you need like all your position swapping things. I see. And then it like discards a card to get the Blue Storm Armada. So it's like, well, but if that card in your hand was something you could have called anyways, then does it matter that you got Judgment? Like, Judgment gives you more power. You like... can you can discard the thing you would have called back with Judgment. Yeah, and then it gets, like, power, but then it's like, yeah. you're not plussing, really. And, like, the core of the problem here is that you're trying to, like, refill your board after it gets, like, blown up. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know. I just feel like this is a situation where it's like, you could have this, or you could just be playing the card that you already wanted to call. This would have been a lot better if it was like, on play if you only have like a, you know... I think if I didn't have to yeah. discard the card to search the yeah. order, if it was like a counter blast or a soul... Bl Make it soul blast 2. This deck has so yeah. much soul. I can afford yeah. soul blast 2. Yeah, it took the words right out of my mouth. If it was a soul blast or a counter blast cost, I think that would have been a lot. Yeah, better. like discarding um, is just weird because it like, like you get the extra power from judgment, which is good, but it like kind of defeats the purpose when the point of judgment is that you call something from the drop zone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm I'm not convinced of this card. It's a shame. And then uh, last one, you pray Stinger. Uh, let's see. Uh, this one is during your turn. If your drop zone has two or more blitz order, it gets 5k. Uh, when it's placed sure. on rear guard circle, you can counter blast one, search your deck or drop for one honey guard, sweet honey garden, reveal it, and then if you search your deck, shuffle. The so sweet honey garden is you a blitz order, you play with soul blast one, choose one of your units, it gets plus 15k until end of battle. If your drop zone has a blitz order, it gets 25 instead of 15. Okay, now that's something. A little bit. Like, that's a lot of shield. Yeah. I mean, the other like... one could be a lot of shield. Mm hmm. I just... Yeah, this is just a case of, like, doesn't really have a home. Yeah. It's uh, Jerry Seinfeld is a bee, doesn't have a home. Um, so, yeah. Were there any other commons or rares that we wanted to bring up? Um, uh, there's about... that one Maelstrom one that we can talk about, both. Like, as a card, but also because of the errata. Okay. Which, uh, that's it was a like common, Gatling. Right? Yeah, it's like Gatling oh. something dragon. Gatling wave dragon. Found him. Okay. Yeah, it's like a rare. Yeah. So, uh, when it attacks, if it's the fifth battle of this turn or more, if you have a Vanguard with Maelstrom in this card name, it gets 10k until the end of battle. At the end of that battle, retire this unit, draw a card. So it had a pre errata before release, so now it just has a comma, so it's all one effect. But it used to have a full stop, so it's like 10k until end of that battle, and then period, at the end of that battle, retire it and draw a card. So it has a, that is a funny, weird ruling that is on Bushiroad's official page. Let me see if I can find it regarding some Messiah thing that was worded the same way, where it's like, when it attacks, if you have a Messiah Vanguard, it like gets 5k and then full stop, period, at the end of that battle, you like lock it. And so it was ruled that even if you don't have a Messiah Vanguard, that card still locked itself. Mm -hmm. So the, the original wording going off of that precedent would mean that this card was generic, just when it attacks, and then you just ignore everything else about it, like Fifth Battle, Maelstrom, Vanguard, because of the full stop. So you only think about when it attacks, so it would just retire itself and draw regardless at the end of the battle. Which is, like, clearly not how this card was intended to work, but because it worked that way, 
you know, we had this like generic card that could kind of be in Lit Pulse that we now do not have. Yeah, which is a shame because uh, Inlet Pulse was such a pain in the butt if you were playing anything green. Yeah. And, uh, th this could have been a nice uh, fix. And of course they had to do I'm surprised they did. Uh, this isn't the first time they've pre-eroded a card. Like when they want well, like when they want things to uh, work a certain way, they will just change it. What a shame. Um I didn't really have anything else I wanted to bring up necessarily. Yeah. I know there's things like Rising Phoenix, which is more Vermilion stuff. Mm. Uh, like that one doesn't really need uh, to be also I just wanted to say inlet pulse kind of sucks anyways. Like <laughs> You yeah. don't play Inlet Pulse outside of, like, its two intended decks anymore. Yeah, and, like, even in Magnolia, you kind of quit doing it for the most part because you have Dolido. So, yeah. it, you know, uh, so, Silver, this Silver is another, King, which... like That's another, like, both things are true. Like, it sucks that they took away a generic card. Also, Inlet Pulse sucks. Stop coping on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, or, yeah, or, or just, like, it, its time has passed, I think, unless you're... It was... No, it was never that good. It was only good in Magnolia, because you could call it back. Like, remember in set 7 when, like, Resonance Dragon was revealed and everyone was like, ooh, Leonorn has a fourth attack, you can use Inlet Pulse, and then nobody played Inlet Pulse. That's true. Um, yeah, and, like, they they gave, like, Gold's uh, another grade mm -hmm. 1 Silverfang Witch from Place on Rear, if you have a grade 3 or greater, the Gold Paladin first clan uh, gets plus 5k and then Counter Blast 1, draw 1. So, yeah, so uh, yeah. this is the thing that, like, if you spam it five times, then yes, you will need Din Drain's counter charge. Yeah. Um, I don't imagine you will, though. So, we'll see. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, uh, which clan do you think won, which one lost? <laughs> Before we get out of here. That's... I mean, I think Brandgate came out the worst. Like, Silhouette is a very basic deck at the moment, and I think, like, because the arms don't do anything interesting, the deck's kind of boring. Mm -hmm. And then Eva being the strongest of the glitters originally meant that it got like worse support than the other ones. So mm -hmm. I feel like it's gonna drop off sooner rather than later. And then like the, relative to the other ones. And the blitz order support for Bra uh, you know for Brandy yeah, doesn't blitz really orders. work with it as opposed but yeah. to sort of, yeah. But yeah, like I think right now, like Silhouette is a good base. Like, I think the mechanic is interesting. They just haven't done anything interesting with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Probably a good Eva's pick up like, and hold. Yeah, and then Eva's just kind of like, eh, this one's not as good as the other one. So it probably got, like, the... So I think Brandgate probably got the worst support this set. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I think either Stoikea uh, or Keter came out the best. I was gonna say, like, Dragon Empire. Oh. I think like, all three of those are pretty close. Yeah, because yeah, like the new Tamayura is extremely powerful. It fixes a lot of the problems with the old one, mm -hmm. where you could guarantee the order that like lets you call the dolls. Uh, no counter blast, so you can afford to use the grade one dolls more. Mm -hmm. So it just makes your entire game plan more consistent by existing. I see. Uh, and then. Uh, Vermilion looks like it's going to be like decent. I don't know like how much it's going to break into the meta, just because like it does have problems with hand size, right? But like binding is very difficult to interact with, especially and also like attacking rear guards like bypasses a lot of protection. Yes. Um, so especially because it doesn't even have to be a like all right attack all the front, or you can do like an L shape or whatever, mm -hmm. and then uh, like. But, and then, like, bind stuff, so, like, Vermilion looks like it'll be, like, powerful, but it might be, like, a glass cannon deck. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, Stoichea, I think, like, the Mista Arc stuff is fun, but I don't know that the deck is good, because, yeah. like, it can recover decently from board wipes just because so many things, like, search or call stuff. Yeah. But, like, it does still need a full... It does need like some amount of board to be effective, and then your numbers are kind of small. So I feel like this is one of those like it needs a second wave with more obnoxious grade twos. Uh, Rora is really good. Just like I have trouble trying to maintain my board sometimes, but that could, but that's just like a get good situation. Just like learn how to manage your deck. I think the actual cards themselves are good. I just think that like Dragon Empire has is the easiest one to look at and go, yes, this is good. 
Gotcha. It's the most nakedly good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cause like, you know, the gray looks really strong, but like as for uh, Keter Sanctuary, like Ezel looks like mid, like it looks okay. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, like at that particular Ezel is a lot better than the mm -hmm. old V and original Ezel were for their time. So mm -hmm. that, that might be why I'm a little more psyched up on it than, uh, yeah, I'm not like, too hyped on Ezel. Yeah, good. like the problem is just like wet noodles, right? Like none of your rear guards get power. So like, if you get the five attacks, you're what like twenty eight k, right? Like thirty one. Uh, the the Vermilion is better than the Ezel in this particular case. But yeah, I'm saying that like it's better than it has been before. Where before when it had when it was broken, it it was through either scissors or uh, um. I mean, Raven it was broken because of premium. Yeah, that too. Um, but I'm saying that, like, you needed a second Ezel to really, like, to do mm -hmm. it up there. But I think this is probably the best base that it's had uh, than any other time. So, yeah, uh, which uh, which clan, or na clan, nation won which lost, your opinion? Leave it in the comments or tweet at us, at Nexus at Night. Um, or you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Nexus at Night. Thanks, Darren, Cole, Josh, Jeremy, GR, Ali, being $10 patrons. Uh, and then where can they find the rest of us? You can find me on Twitter at Wiggums, two Gs, two Zs. You can find me at Plasma Eclipse. Find me at Atlas Novak, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, or on YouTube at The Epileptic Comic. Um, or my other podcast, at Generation Dan. Uh, we're recording the 100th episode this will be coming out as soon as I'm done editing it. So it's uh, we're recording it today, and it's live if you want to come hang out. And then it'll be dropping like on all the podcast apps next Thursday. So that's fun. Talking summertime. And thanks, everybody, for listening. And until next time, I was Atlas. I'm Matt. I'm Root Beer. And have a good night.